educational games. Now there is a term that will send everybody running. Now why would it? After all, this game will teach you something useful and it will be absolutely horrible. Educational games have the tendency to, for the most part, be awful, or at least they were a couple of years ago. Mainly because, you see, back in the day people didn't understand a basic concept of games. Games themselves, no matter their subject, are educational. We learn through play. Animals learn through play. Everything is learned through play. So when making an educational game, you don't need to have an NPC. Just stand around saying stuff that people may find useful. I've seen some games that do that, a lot of games actually, that just have an NPC tell you a lesson, as if it were some sort of class. That that's, that's not how you make an educational game. The hallmark of education, the, the best way you can teach anyone anything is to let them do it. To let them do it again and again the way they want to and to let them fail. Without failure there is not really that much education involved. Because unless you know how to fail at something, you will probably fail at that thing eventually and not know why or how. And games, actual games, not your things you don't want to call games, are very good at instilling the idea of needing to learn the gameplay, the game, in order to win, in order to understand, in order to succeed. That in itself is a tool for education of the utmost importance. I'd like to give you two examples of two educational games that teach very different subjects. One of them is Kolobot. This was one of the earliest educational games, actual good ones, not ones where what's one plus one, Mickey Mouse? An actual educational game that tried to teach you through its gameplay, that tried to challenge you into becoming better at that subject. And that subject was programming. This game would give you the objective to colonize, well not colonize, but explore the planets of the solar system, which is something that should sound familiar to you. And while you could do it manually with your character, you were encouraged to build robots and program them to do various tasks. The programming language used by Colobot was, I believe, a combination of C and Pascal and maybe a bit of Java. It was a sort of pseudocode parser that was very good at teaching the fundamentals of programming how structures worked, how code functioned, how it was understood by the machines. Now it didn't go in that with stuff like let's define an array and let's initialize DirectX and see what blows up. None of that stuff, it was just basic programming. And it worked because it required you to actually understand how to program in order to progress and better accomplish your objectives. That is what you would call a fundamental difference between what education is in schools and what education should be. And no other game symbolizes that more than the other one about exploring the solar system, Kerbal Space Program. That fundamental difference is games don't give you exams, games don't expect you to cram, games don't expect you to constantly value knowing a certain subject for about five minutes and then forgetting it over actually understanding that subject. It's practice versus theory and Kerbal Space Program is practice personified. You can know absolutely zero about getting something into space, but spend enough time with this game and you will understand the finer points of orbiting a planet, of getting into orbit, of achieving contact with another object that's floating around in space. Yeah, sure, it's difficult, but it's rewarding. It gives you a sense of achievement that an exam just lacks. Oh good, I got a passing grade, yay! My parents won't beat me. No, that, that's, not, that's not good education. Look, I managed to duck with that space thing I launched and put up there about a year ago and forgot about it. Isn't that amazing? 
and all that was needed was for me to understand how to plot a trajectory. Now that thing about the trajectory, that's something you will remember. Yeah, you probably won't go into the field of astrophysics or rocketry or anything like that, but still, education, any kind of education, is important. Which is one of the reasons why I like tycoon games, though some of them do tend to have a more humorous approach and not really reflect reality, they do instill the idea of basic economics, the idea of balancing a budget, formulating a business plan, marketing and other stuff like that. And also they will make you obsessed with trains after a while and roller coasters, but that's a whole other matter. And a game like the movies will teach you how to edit a video, which is an actually useful skill, also how to make movies. Games can teach you politics through their gameplay, like City Kings 2 does, they can teach you diplomacy, though not in the way civilization does it by just having you be utterly annihilated by Gandhi and his nuclear arsenal. And some games go even deeper than that, they can use their gameplay to teach you concepts of morality, concepts of philosophy, like the Ultima series did, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one actually did manage to do a lot because you remember how that went, right? The cover was about the avatar defeating some evil devilish looking thing and you began the game surrounded by evil devilish looking things that attacked you and you attacked them and you killed as many of them as you could and then you realized they weren't the villain, they were just running for their lives because... A few games ago, you utterly destroyed their world. You built your entire religion on their doom. Yeah, you can call it a plot twist, but you learn it through gameplay, because up until that point you would kill a lot of gargoyles. The game tried to instill the idea of tolerance, the idea of not just taking something at face value, of not automatically perceiving something as evil just because it's different and currently a bit hostile. It just may be desperate. It may not have choices. That's the kind of thing you don't see taught all that often in video games, sadly. There should be more. And currently, instead of those concepts being taught to you, they're taught at you, sort of. In ways you don't feel that involved, through cinematics, through dialogue, which may work on some level, but isn't that effective as doing it through gameplay. Though there are things you can't do that well through gameplay, like teach history. Well, yeah, you can teach military tactics and things about the wars of Hannibal, Caesar, World War I, all those wars through Total War games, through Europa Universalis games, Hearts of Iron, all sorts of stuff. But it's harder to teach actual history through that. Which is where games like Assassin's Creed come in, which may have crappy gameplay that doesn't teach a thing, but they do have very well-made scenery that is accurate to reality, to the historic reality. They have characters that are very much akin to their real-world counterparts, even though the scenery tends to be filled from time to time with Templars, Assassins, Pieces of Eden and ancient, forgotten, very advanced races, which as we know isn't all that historic. Similarly, you can learn a lot about history by playing something like Civilization, or something like Age of Empires that actually show the evolution of mankind from its earlier stages all the way to the Space Age, learning new technology developing tools. Sure, for some reason America exists in the Stone Age. A trace? The Dacians? No, they don't exist according to Firaxis. They never existed. Why should they? They only occupied a large portion of Europe and have descendants now that number in the hundreds of millions. Why should they have a chance to be presented in a video game like they should, like it would be normal? But no, they were savages, they didn't have a written language. They worshipped some guy that was immortal. <coughs> Sorry, personal gripe. What I'm getting at is Civ 6. Sid, Thracians, Dacians, you know. Don't you think it's time? It's time, isn't it? Come on. You know you wanna. You know you wanna. Now, there's also a bit of a dark side to teaching things through gameplay. Namely, sometimes we can teach the wrong things. And... Uh, we don't do that intentionally. Now you've probably seen my show about Mario being a completely evil bastard that encourages you to do the work of Satan, but that just shows how sometimes 
games can be misunderstood. Not all games are meant to be educational. Not all games are meant to teach you something. Not all games are meant to instill in you the idea that you should jump on the heads of turtles and crush them with your feet. Sometimes a game is just a game. It's there for fun. It's not meant to symbolize something different. It's not meant to be taken to a whole new plane of understanding. Because the developer never meant to do that. The developer never at any point set out with the idea, hmm, I'm gonna make this game about a bold man that undresses other men be actually all about oppressing women. You know, you can read a lot in the gameplay that's not actually there, especially when you do a poor job of it. Oh my god, can people do a poor job of understanding gameplay, of understanding what a game tries to teach you, to present to you, to get you to think about. Not all games do that, not all games set out with the express purpose of at the end of the day having you learn something from playing it. Or I could be wrong and Counter-Strike has trained me to be a very effective murderer. It, spoiler, it, it hasn't. I'm curious to know what was your favorite educational game or what was the game that made you learn the most, no matter what it was. What game taught you something you never knew and something that you'll remember to this day? Feel free to share your experience. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.